38-year-old Kelly Lynch could write a book. It would go into great detail about surviving five separate cancers. The latest chapter would be about her latest battle, a brain tumor. This past summer, we were on a trip to Costa Rica. The night that we got home, I went to bed and my husband came to bed and uh, apparently said that I was breathing very strangely. It almost sounded like she was having a really intense dream, but it kept going on for probably a good half a minute or so. Uh, and I started to get concerned that something wasn't right here. So I kind of went to try to shake her to wake her up and she didn't, didn't respond in any way. And then I realized that something more serious was happening. <coughs> Called the paramedics and they said, we think you had a seizure. We'd like to take you to the hospital and get you checked out. I went to the hospital, had a brain scan and found a tumor in my brain. Um, while I was at the hospital, I went into another seizure and was transferred to Hershey Medical Center. This tumor was about three centimeters. That's more or less like an inch and a half. Located in the left temporal region. This is in an area that is also involved in speech and language function, oftentimes involved in what we call receptive language, which is kind of really understanding and comprehending complex speech. So this was my fifth totally different type of cancer. Five different cancers. A gene mutation is to blame. Lee from many is a mutation that makes you your cells just more prone to develop tumors. There's no guarantee that they will, um, but you're just more prone to tumors in general. Could be malignant or benign. Kelly chose to have the brain tumor removed surgically. We proceeded with doing an awake surgery, again with the goal of identifying critical areas that are involved in the comprehension of speech, understanding speech, protecting those areas, and removing the mass in its entirety, both to get a diagnosis, to alleviate the symptoms, prevent further seizures, and get control of the tumor. I don't remember much of anything, but what they would do was wake me up and ask me certain specific questions just to make sure that my brain was functioning. And it, everything turned out beautifully. He, he was able to get everything that he could see. The surgery was a major success. I saw her after the surgery to determine if there would be a benefit in adding radiation treatment uh, to the surgery she had on the brain. And the reason that radiation is offered is to reduce the risk of the cancer returning in the brain uh, in the region where the surgery was originally done. And it was actually completely seamless. What they did was they numbed my skull in the areas where they needed to attach like a, what I would call a halo. I don't, I'm not exactly sure what it's exactly called, but it's something that would keep my head stable in the machine. Once the head frame is secured, then the patient will get an MRI with the head frame on. And that MRI gives us the most up-to-date imaging to plan the treatment on that very day. And then the head frame is worn until the treatment's completed. The radiation itself is painless. You don't see or feel the radiation and you're not radioactive, you don't carry any radiation in your body. Honestly, that experience, um, it, it, I mean, it wasn't pleasant, you know, it wasn't what anyone wants to do, but given what it was, it, it wasn't that bad to actually go through it. It's an in and out procedure. I was there early in the morning and I was out before lunchtime. 